You're watching the South Texas News Leader. This is 3 News at 10. In our late news tonight, discussions over the possibility of war with Iran. What President Trump is saying after a U.S. drone was shot down today. Plus, a Mathis child shot in the neck. But where were the parents? We have an update on the child's condition and the charges pending in the case. And now that state lawmakers and the governor have approved teacher pay raises, what the local American Federation of Teachers is demanding from the CCISD. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Kristen Diaz. And I'm Joe Gaze. And at the top tonight, in what the Pentagon is calling a major provocation, Iran shot down an unarmed and unmanned Navy drone today. U.S. officials say it was flying in international airspace over the Strait of Hormuz, a primary oil transport waterway in the Persian Gulf. So the big question now is how will the White House respond? So far, President Trump has been noncommittal. We have a late update just into us from ABC on this top story. Thursday, President Trump summoning congressional leaders to the Situation Room for a high-stakes military and intelligence briefing on Iran. The president telling reporters... Iran made a mistake. These pictures from the Pentagon showing a U.S. surveillance drone falling from the sky, shot out of the air by an Iranian missile over the Gulf of Oman. Iran's military commander saying that drone was over Iranian airspace, but the U.S. military says that's not true. This was an unprovoked attack on a U.S. surveillance asset that had not violated Iranian airspace at any time during its mission. Despite Iran's claims of defense, President Trump suggesting the missile fire may have happened by accident. Oh, I, I find it hard to believe it was intentional, if you want to know the truth. I think that it could have been somebody who was uh, loose and stupid that did it. Some of the president's top allies now encouraging him to take aggressive action. Senator Lindsey Graham saying Iran should be ready for, quote, severe pain. All I can tell you, if you're not willing to stand up to aggression, you're going to get hurt. But other lawmakers from both parties urging caution. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer saying inside the Situation Room, he asked for congressional approval to fund any sustained military effort against Iran. The president may not intend to go to war here, but we're worried that he and the administration may bumble into a war. President Trump was asked Thursday if he's being pushed into war by his own team, and he said no. In fact, if anything, he wants to get out of what he calls these endless wars. But when asked specifically about the possibility of war with Iran, the president simply said, you'll find out. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Washington. The investigation into who shot a three-year-old Mathis boy is still underway tonight. Please tell 3 News there were adults at the home during the time of the shooting. This is a story you saw here first on 3 News. The shooting happened at a home on East Rockport in Mathis yesterday afternoon. Police are now saying there could be charges pending against those adults. It is unconfirmed if whether or not they are the parents of that child. That toddler remains at Driscoll Children's Hospital tonight. We are told he is in stable condition but will have to undergo a additional surgeries. A well, story now about stolen firearms. It's a serious problem in Corpus Christi. Last year alone, police tell us more than 200 guns were stolen by thieves. Most of the time they were taken from vehicles. Many times those vehicles were parked in front of the owner's homes. Today, CCPD joined forces with the Department of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, the ATF, to get a message out to gun owners. Be responsible in your gun ownership. Uh, lock your guns up, plan ahead. Uh, if you know you can't take your firearm into a business or wherever you're, you're going, that you either secure them properly in your vehicle or leave them at home in a safe. A lot of times people just forget, you know, they don't think it's going to happen at their house, but the, the majority of these happen at residential locations. The vast majority of them are at residential spots, whether it, it's a home, it's an apartment complex, or even a hotel. And the police department here has also just received several hundred new gun locks to hand out to gun owners who want them. The officers say the locks will be included with any stolen guns that are recovered and returned to the owners, but that anyone who wants a gun, can, a gun lock that is, can pick one up for free at the police station in downtown Corpus Christi. Elsewhere tonight, there's a major twist in the trial of a Navy SEAL accused of war crimes and murder. One of the prosecution's key witnesses taking the stand today and telling a version of events that stunned everyone in the courtroom, including prosecutors. Here's ABC's Marcy Gonzalez.
A bombshell in decorated Navy SEAL Edward Gallagher's war crimes trial. The platoon leader of an elite special operations unit accused of killing this captured, wounded ISIS fighter he was supposed to treat, posing for photos with the teenager's body. Special Operator First Class Corey Scott taking the stand Thursday afternoon, telling the court he saw Gallagher take out his knife and stab the prisoner. But then Scott making a stunning claim, saying that he killed the teen, not Gallagher, claiming he plugged the prisoner's airway because he believed he'd survived the stab wound, only to later be tortured by Iraqi forces. Today, the truth started to come out. What we've been saying for all this time, this is a shoddy investigation. The lead prosecutor caught off guard, saying it's the first time he's heard this, accusing Scott, who has immunity and cannot be charged with murder in this case, of lying to protect his fellow SEAL. Scott asked whether he thinks Gallagher should go to jail, replying, Gallagher's got a wife and family. I don't think he should be spending his life in prison. Gallagher's wife leaving court, calling the testimony a relief, but saying claims that her husband stabbed the prisoner are untrue. And my husband will be exonerated and his innocence will be known to everybody after way too long. Gallagher is also charged with attempted murder, accused of shooting at civilians. He could face life in prison if convicted in this trial. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. The American Federation of Teachers is demanding answers from the Corpus Christi Independent School District Board. They want to know what teachers can expect to be paid next year with the latest proposed pay raise percentage. Now this month, Governor Greg Abbott signed Texas House Bill 3 into law. It approves $6.5 billion to improve public education and increase teacher pay. Nancy Vetta, president of the AFT, says other area school districts have released their budgets and there is no excuse why the CCISD board can't release theirs. If you ask to leave to another school district that pays more after the July 12th deadline, then they will pursue teacher certifications or revoke teacher certifications for a year so that teachers won't be able to leave. The CCISD has responded to the concern, saying the funds for the 2019-2020 budget require board re review and approval. The next board meeting is scheduled for Monday, July 22nd, when that information is expected to be addressed. Well, there is much more straight ahead on 3 News at 10 this Thursday. A happy update tonight. You're going to see how this little girl, born 18 weeks maturely, is thriving as she celebrates her first birthday with those who helped get her there. Oh, so cute. And later, see how a summer program on the west side of town is offering local kids a chance to attend a free summer camp. It's all coming up at 3 News at 10.